So here is the hook handle that I made. Um, I am not a clay or sculpting expert, but I thought this was a pretty cool shape. It's flat on the bottom, so you're able to stand up your hook. I like that because mine is usually rolling around on my workstation or just off the couch or wherever. I thought it was pretty cool that it stands up. It's the ergonomic shape, so it will help any kind of tendonitis issues you might have. You need an aluminum hook because we will be putting it in the oven. And then you also need some clay. This is Sculpey clay. I got this at Joann's. And I'm just going to estimate how much I need. I'm just going to rip off a block here. And here's a rolling pin. And what you need to do is really manipulate the clay for some time to get it to move around and be able to be molded into the shape you want. Once you feel the clay become more pliable, it's time to figure out how long you need your hook handle. Um, I do like to use the rolling pin because it helps even out the whole layer. You don't want it too thin or too thick and you don't want it thick in some places and thin in the other. So the rolling pin helps even that out. Here's my son coming to help place the hook onto the flat piece that we just created. You're going to want to leave at least half of this grip open. I like to place my thumb there. So wherever you like to grip your hook best is where you're going to want the clay to stop. And then you're just going to mold it as evenly as you can around the entire hook. Like I said before, you don't want some parts too thin or too thick. Um, this is the part where you really just have to feel it out. Um, you may have to take off some clay, you may have to add some, but here we will just be doing more manipulating with the clay to get it evenly around the hook. So don't forget to test out your hook and make sure the clay is in the places that you need. I need more clay around my pinky area because that's where a lot of my tendonitis stems from. So I make the bottom of mine a little bit thicker and I make sure there's space where I like to put my thumb because I don't want a bunch of clay um, where I like to place my thumb. But that's just my personal preference. Maybe you need more clay at your thumb area so you can customize this however you need to. I found I really like to roll it around in between my hands and on the work surface. It seemed to really even out the clay around the hook and smooth out any cracks that may be in the clay. So here I just wanted to compare the last hook I made with this one. I really liked how big the last one was. Um, here now we are going to do the very bottom, the part where it helps it stand up. So you're going to take an extra piece of clay and roll it into a ball in between your hands. And then once you've got the ball, you can add some more if you need to. You do want it to be fairly thick because you don't want the hook to poke through the bottom. So here you're going to take the ball and you're going to push it on the bottom of your hook and you're just going to mold it to the bottom to kind of make it like an extended piece of your hook handle. Next you're going to want to flatten the bottom, so what I did was I gently pressed it to the bottom of my workspace and then I made little indents with my fingers by holding them this way and that way it just kind of made a little bevel, a little curve at the bottom and you don't want to push too hard, you obviously don't want the hook to go straight through. There's that little bevel I made with my fingers. And this is another thing where you're going to have to be patient and just go around and around to try to even it out. 
and keep smoothing in those cracks and those lines make sure you have everything even and that's really all there is to it that's how you make a standing hook Here I'm trying to fan out the bottom a little bit more. You can do little pinches at the bottom. And this is just about it. Um, I will work out those cracks um, a little bit more. And comparing it to the last one again, about the same size. Both have flat bottoms. <laughs> this one's bottom is a little bit bigger. And yeah, just do your best to keep molding and trying new techniques and then we will get it in the oven. So be sure to follow your clay packages directions. Mine say 275 degrees Fahrenheit, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. So I preheated my oven to 275. I'm going to put it on the middle rack and I'm going to bake mine for about 12 minutes to begin with and then I'll monitor it and see if I need to add a few more minutes. So here it is after 12 minutes. Um, I like the way it looks and feels. I let it cool for a couple minutes before I touched it and it seems fully baked to me so I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to add any more minutes but if you feel for any reason that you needed to add a couple more then feel free as long as you're following the directions on the package. Um, here is the hook after it's all cooled. It's a nice matte finish. I'm excited to use this on my current project. It's a really big one for fall, so I definitely need all the support I can get in my hands. And another benefit I wanted to add is how differently you crochet when you have an ergonomic hook compared to just a plain old small skinny hook. Um, the ergonomic shape really helps your stitches stay consistent and it kind of just helps you flow more because you have just such a nice comfortable handle to hold on to and um, everything just seems to flow much easier for me. My stitches look better. I'm able to work faster. So here I'm just showing you, yeah, I have less tension on my pinky there now that I have a bigger handle. And of course going through chains is always a little bit of a struggle, but once I get on to the other rows, it really just flows so much more and it just makes my project so much more enjoyable. So yeah, again, this makes my stitches much more consistent and even. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope it helps you, and it stands. Happy crocheting!